Haggai's soon-to-be health secretary Wes Streeting appeared on The Trevor Phillips Show where he responded to points raised by billionaire Jim Radcliffe about life post-Brexit and how immigration is a burden on public services like the NHS. This of course is nonsensical. Over a quarter of a million or one in five of NHS staff are foreign-born. We also know that people who have moved to the UK have to pay to use certain services. Also, the NHS and social care are currently seeing massive vacancies, some due to Brexit, others due to insufficient funding from Westminster. West Streeting here sent out some mixed messages on this. Have a listen. Uh, Pointing out that he supported Brexit because, as he put it, we cannot cope with the vast numbers of people coming into the United Kingdom who overburden the NHS. Um, Are you sure that's the message that you want projected? Well, I I think we do need to reduce net migration as well as deal with some of the challenges we've got in relation to challenges like small boats. But he's saying migration is overwhelming the... uh, overburdening, a big pardon, the NHS. That's your... Well, I think you have to look at this in the round as well because, you know, I'm conscious of the fact that we are actually over-reliant on migration to staff the NHS at the moment. So... We are taking people from red list countries, countries that by definition have a severe shortage of their own healthcare workers. And the reason we've been recruiting so many people from overseas to work in the NHS is because we haven't been investing in our own homegrown talent. We've actually been turning away thousands of straight A students from studying medicine at university because of the cap on places. And actually, I think not only is that immoral as far as recruitment from red list countries goes, I think it's unfair to UK students who've been turned away. And I think it's a long term strategic risk to the NHS because there's a global shortage of healthcare workers now. So we have to be self sufficient in terms of building, training, drawing on our own homegrown talent. But look, do you know, Trevor, that the the last 75 years, the story of the NHS has run alongside the story of Empire Windrush. Yeah, and and Migration's we... built the NHS as well as... Before, before we go into history, what, what Rat- Ratcliffe is basically saying is that there's too much pressure, there's too much demand on the NHS, and one way of reducing that demand uh, is by reducing immigration. Well, no, I, I think that there are a whole range of reasons why the NHS is under enormous pressure, okay. not least the catastrophic decisions we've seen throughout the last 14 years of Conservative government. All right. But my great, I, this is why I think the picture is a bit more complicated than, than, than Sir Jim set out, because, okay. you know, migration has also been a huge part of staffing the NHS. And but, similarly, I see the government is now waging war on international students. Well, what a way to shoot yourself in the foot when it comes to for, for, the future forgive, of the economy. Forgive me my interruption. Power. Our time is limited, and every time we get... Okay. Um, Jim Radcliffe, I think, is a fool <laughs> because he doesn't seem to understand Brexit, he doesn't understand immigration, and he certainly doesn't understand the NHS because he's made ridiculous statements about all of those. Now... What West Streeting has said here makes a lot of sense. If the UK is relying, or Western countries are relying on foreign staff, this of course creates a number of problems. Now, training up your own sounds good, but there are a number of reasons why that's not happening. As I said, foreign staff are cheaper, their home countries have paid for the training. This results in a brain drain, of course, as West Streeting has pointed out in, in, in not so many words, but in a sense. And this is immoral, and it's an immoral position, as he has rightly said, because what you're doing is you're taking doctors, nurses, medical staff from poor countries, and then you're leaving those healthcare systems under more and more strain because they're not able to hold on to their staff. Now, it's cheaper for, for example, the United Kingdom to just bring staff in because, as I said, those medical staff are trained up. They didn't have to spend the money on universities and stuff like that because it is expensive there's a cap on places in universities medical schools at the moment for a number of reasons like the cost of training is massive and it costs the government much more than the students pay in fees so we've heard a lot about how students are massively in debt well the cost to the state is much higher so that this is one of the reasons why the num there is a cap on um, places at universities because of the cost of actually training up GP d- doctors, nurses, GPs, whatever, specialists. There's a cap also to ensure the level of training, teaching, and assessment. Larger class sizes would, of course, result in lower quality training and many students not being followed and eventually dropping out 
and of course this would add to the cost. There's also an issue with clinical placement. There simply isn't the extra capacity for large numbers of students being monitored or being mentored, sorry, and followed by existing NHS staff and university professors. So, you know, you, the, the, the medical students need to be monitored, need to be mentored, need to be followed in, for example, at university, but also in the NHS hospitals. And as we know, the NHS is already understaffed. And then there's the planning for the NHS itself. The CAP helps the NHS manage the number of new doctors entering the profession each year. If there are too many, then it could limit career opportunities and result in doctors just quitting or moving to other countries where there are better opportunities and, be and there's better pay. So the idea of training up your own sounds good on paper, but it requires massive amounts of investment. It also requires the staff to, ma to monitor, to mentor the students in the NHS itself. And as I said, there's already massive vacancy. Um, so I don't know how they're going to fix this. I think West Streeting and, the, and a future Labour government will be a bit more pragmatic. They will say, look, we have to rely on foreign staff until we train up our own. But our goal is to train up our own staff so we're less reliant on foreign workers. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.